In this tutorial, we're going to model a sardine can, or at least we're going to begin the process of doing this package design. The first thing that we're going to do is the metal tab at the top. We're going to use a NURBS curve. If you watched my video on NURBS curves, you'll know why they are ideal to trace this template, as opposed to, say, using Bezier curves. Make sure you have the extra curves add-on enabled in Preferences. Shift A come down to curves and then we're going to start with a point. Let's come down to this simple curve and make sure it's set to a NURBS curve and we're going to note that it says order of four which is the correct default. Remember that because there's a bug in Blender that's going to prevent that from taking. G and then X and we're going to move that point to this position press the E key and I'm going to begin extruding segments out. You don't want the point itself to lie on the curve of the template. We want the center of the segment between the two points to lie on the curve. E key, E key, E key. And I probably overshot a little bit. That's okay. Let's come down to the data object properties for the curve and come down to active spline. And we're going to see that it says order U of four and that's where it's incorrect. So we need to put four in in order to see the curve. So now we have a long straight segment, E key. I'll pull out to about there. Okay, E, E, E. And don't worry if the curve at this point isn't exactly following. The back segments will continue to adjust as we add new segments. E. And then finally E, I want that to be right on the red line. And I eyeballed it pretty closely, but you could have also just come up here and typed in zero in order to get that exactly there. So this is where we could come in. Now I, I want to move to the move tool and let's come over to tweak mode so that we can just click, hold and drag points to begin adjusting the shape. So now you can get a sense for how it is that we want to adjust that. Now, if you feel that you need to have another segment in here, I could select these two points. There's a segment now selected, bring up the context menu and you can subdivide that. And then I can redistribute those points in order to get a little bit finer curvature matching to the template. Okay, and then we'll just drive back and we'll come over and look. Now, if, if you temporarily want to, that the line segments are really heavy, the way they've got that design, and it can kind of obscure the curve. You can just come up here, see where it says curve. You can temporarily toggle that off so that you can look at your curve to see if it's matching. So that's just a nice little convenience. Let's come back over. So I need to adjust these to get those more into alignment with each other. But otherwise, the curve looks pretty well. So you can see how easy it was for the NURBS curve to generate a curve that matches my template. There we go. So I, this is where I would probably come in again and I would just turn this off and on. And I think I need some more control right there. Okay, there we go. So this is where maybe here I would also, maybe between these two, I would bring up and subdivide that in order to add a little bit more control and distribute those. And there we go. I think that works pretty well. Yeah, that's awesome. So there is our starting point. And you can see how easy it was to use that NURBS curve to give us just the minimal amount of geometry we need to complete the rest of the shape. I'm going to press the A key, Shift and D, press the Escape key so it's just simply duplicated, press the Period key, and let's take the pivot point to the 3D cursor's location, S key, only along the Y axis, and then minus one, enter, and we get that over to the other side. Now we need to merge these together. Come over just one point at the symmetry point, press the X key to delete that, and then select this point, hold the shift key and select that point, bring up the context menu, make a segment, there we go. Now this is where we could, you see how this kind of comes in just a little bit. I'm going to press the G key and X to kind of bring that out just a little. You, you'll see those symmetry point adjustments as they come up. Do the same thing over here. X key, vertex. But in this particular case, we simply come over to the object data properties and make it cyclic. 
and then we want to turn off endpoint. Endpoint will make a crease at the endpoint. You don't want that to happen. We want to turn off fill. There we go. We need to convert this explicitly into a polygon mesh. Press the tab key. What we want to do is select all the points, bring up the context menu, and we're going to change the curve type from NURBS over into poly, and then leave edit mode, bring up the context menu, and we're going to explicitly convert this over into a mesh type now. It's unfilled, it's just polylines. And now notice that when we apply a subdivision surface modifier, let's take this up to three, it matches the original NURBS curve exactly, which is awesome. So for now, I'm just going to turn off subdivision, press the tab key to enter edit mode, A key, and then we're going to press the F key to fill that with the polygon. We can come over now to the inset function. Now you see it says I down there. You can also just press the I key. And I'm going to inset that and bring it in just a little bit, roughly getting the center of each segment of that new interior edge loop to match up to the uh, profile. Press the X key and we're going to delete that center face. We don't need that for right now. We want to add a bridge in the middle. So we're going to press the K key and I'm just roughly going to look at this edge right here. Come up here, click, come down, press the Y key so it constrains to the Y axis and click on the other side, then right click. And we're going to do the same thing right about for here. Click Y key and then click here and enter. Then take this edge, hold the shift key, take this edge, bring up the context menu and we're going to bridge those loops. And then we're going to use the loop cut function. We're going to click right there, there, and there to add a few extra segments in place. In fact, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to have us put one more loop in here. We're going to do just a little bit of editing. And so I'm going to turn on symmetry because now we have obvious symmetry. Come back to the move tool and we want to go back into tweak mode and vertex mode because we want to do some adjustment. I think I could make this, let me turn on subdivision. I think I could make this just a little bit closer to the template. It doesn't need to be exactly on it, but the, the curve is a little bit tight down there. So I like that tweak mode and just repositioning these a little bit works and it applies the symmetry across the top. But here we have a little bit more work to do because the current polygon mesh doesn't give us the right curvature for that area. First thing that I want to do is add a little bit of extra geometry in edge mode. I'm going to select this edge and this edge. And then we're going to do new face from edges. And we'll do the same thing with these two edges. Shift R to repeat that command. Okay, so we've got some forming work to do here. Let's turn off subdivision so that's not kind of in our way. We select both of these newly created edges. They're actually polygons. We could visualize a little bit better if we turn that on. Bring up the context menu invoke the subdivide function. We want to subdivide these to a value of two. I'm going to press the G key and I'll move that down there and G key and I'll kind of move that roughly down there. Let's pare back some of this geometry that we have internally. We're going to dissolve those edges and then press shift R to dissolve this edge. So we've got this nebulous geometry going on which is very common, come into vertex mode and we're in tweak. So I can just continue to kind of move these, but we really won't know exactly what position these need to come to until we turn subdivision back on. So I'm not going to worry about their exact position at this point, but what I want to do is start dicing this up into quads and triangles with quads being what we predominantly want to target. Select these two, bring up the context menu, and then you can do a connect vertex path. And here, press the K key, and I'll just click here, and then I'll come over here and click there, and hit return. So we've got this big nebulous polygon in the middle, which is okay. We don't need to worry about that so much, and that'll become apparent in just a minute. But what we have now is something that we can preview with subdivision in order to fine tune the curvature around here. Let's focus in onto this area. Again, I, I'm checking, I'm in tweak mode in the move tool, so I can actually grab points like this and begin tweaking this until I see this curve 
generally matching up a little bit more closely to the template. It doesn't need to be exact, and I think that looks about good. And this, this side isn't too bad. This matches up pretty closely already, and you can just do little bits of tweaking, but that looks good. Okay, so there we go. Now, we were in this symmetry mode, and it because not all the operations get transferred. So we're going to end up just mirroring the geometry across to the other side. I'm going to switch over into select box mode in face. Let's disable subdivision temporarily. I'll marquee across this top area, X key, delete those faces. And then we're going to come over and add a mirror operation. And let's do just the Y and then press the tab key to leave edit mode because we can't apply it while we're in edit mode. We'll apply that. Okay, there we go. Tab. The next thing that we need to do is we, we're going to be having a little bit of rounding around the corners before we apply thickness. So we need to do that now. And this is also going to kind of help us to understand why it is that I can leave this polygon here that's not a quad and it's not a triangle. It's an n-gon. And it's okay to have those in some cases. And this is one of those. So A key. Let's press the I key again, which is the inset. Inset just a little way. So it doesn't need to be too far. Something about like that. And then click. We've created a boundary, and inside of that boundary in this planar region, then that's okay to have irregular polygons. It's all planar, and so it's, it's not a problem. We don't need to worry about dicing that up into quads or triangles. The next thing that we need to do is we need to come over and apply thickness to this. So we can come over to the extrude region. Let's look at this from the side. And I'm going to grab this. Now, I have an annoyance with their user interface convention. I clicked the little X, which should give us just a normal move, but it always clicks the circle, which gives you free form move. And I'm going to press the Z key to only go right along the Z axis. And then down here, type in a value of point 0 0.055. So this is being modeled to actual scale, the actual size of the real object. And there we go. So we've given ourselves thickness, essentially. Let's come down to the loop cut tool, and I'm going to produce a loop cut on the outside here and a loop cut here. For this one, we're actually going to dissolve this edge. And then I'm going to double click this loop, and we're just going to perform a bevel on it. So we'll come down to our handy bevel function, and we just want to do the default of one shape of 0.5, and we'll bevel down till we get about like that. So I'm basing this off an actual real tab that I had that I looked at. So this one is a little bit different. We don't need to do too much more to that. But we are going to come in and remove this loop. Press the X key, delete that. Okay, now come in back into edge mode and I'm going to leave it open. I'm not going to worry about it. Double click this loop and then press the F key to fill that. While we have that selected, come into the inset faces. So you can either tap I or you can go directly to the inset function. We're going to pull that in oh, about, about, like, about like that. Double click this top edge loop. We need to come down to the bevel tool, set segments to two and shape to one. And then we'll add a little bit of extra control geometry to the top. In face mode, select this face and press the X key to delete that. We don't need it. Let's switch over into the top view. Now, if this happens, you, it's just the view camera is way off for some reason from where you are. Press the A key. That'll select all the components of my model, and then I can do frame selected, and that will bring it back into view. We've got this component, which attaches the tab to the can. I want to move the 3D cursor from its position here right to about the center of that. I want it to be exact, so we'll come down to View. Along the Y axis, we want to make sure it's a zero exactly. Shift and A, and we're going to con we want to add a circle, but we need to know the number of segments. So what I will do is I will double click this out. I don't want to be in the, I, I do this all the time. I have the 3D cursor in a location and I use it as a tool to double click and it moves it. So we're going to come back over here to the move tool and come over to the overlays and we're going to turn on statistics. We can see that I have 20 edges selected. So let me move my cursor back into location, make sure I'm accurate. 
and then press Shift and A, and we're going to add a circle. But now we know the number of segments. It's enormous, but we need to put 20 segments in. And let's put in a value of 0.1 inches, because this is to scale, the model that we're working on. It's um, not quite to the size that I need. That's okay. So let's close this press the S key and I'm going to scale it to this outside perimeter. Okay. This is an unfilled polygon. It's just, it's just naked edges at this point. So press the F key to fill that. Now we need to bridge from here to this loop here. Hold the shift key and double click this, bring up the context menu, bridge edge loops. Now one thing I would suggest is just to come over and do face orientation. It looks like we've got all our faces going inward when they should be going outward. And so what I'm going to do is press A and come up to Mesh, down to Normals, and we're just going to have it recalculate outside. That, that'll that just prevent potential shading issues downstream when you're actually rendering. Okay, let's turn that off. It's a good thing to always check that periodically. Select Ah, it drives me nuts when I keep coming back to the cursor and I'm moving the cursor. Select this face, press the I to inset, and we're going to come to this location. Press the E key to extrude up a little bit, and then the I key again, and we're going to come in, but we're now going to hold the control key, and we're going to move up just a little bit like that, and click, and then we'll use the bevel function. Let's set this to a value of 3 and 0.5 back to its default value, and we'll produce the rounding for the top of the tab like that. Come back down to this area. There, this is what I call the moat. It's, it's inset just a little bit, and this is the way the physical object is. And we're going to come over to the extrude region, click that, and pull that down just a little bit. Now, because we want to maintain this feature. We don't want it subdivided. Let's come back into edge mode. Double click that edge. Hold the shift key. Double click this edge. Press shift and E. And we're going to tell these to be hard edges. See, what you do is you just mouse to the right, click, and then you just want to make sure the edge crease is set to a value of one. That'll just make sure that we don't subdivide around this. In fact, we need to also do this loop. So press Shift and R, and it will apply that there also. So I'm going to take this loop at the bottom, and I'm going to move this up so it functions more to constrain the geometry right there. We can turn on subdivision, and we can see that handiwork. Let's turn our attention to one final detail. We have these loops that we added in, and these function as boundaries between the planar area and areas that we want to have curvature. So the way the subdivision works is that this polygon here is being subdivided against this polygon. And we can see this boundary is a representation of this polygon's influence into the subdivision coming into the flat area. So we can turn off optimal display and we can actually see the polygons. And let's do this. We're going to adjust a little bit so that we're, con we're considering this to be kind of a hard body modeling exercise. And whenever you're doing that, you really want your flat areas to be flat. And you want your curving areas to be curving, and you don't want the two really mixing together. And that's currently what's happening. It's technically bringing a little bit of curvature into this area, even though it is flat. And frankly, this is a fairly organic piece of modeling that is small. But for the sake of learning subdivision surfaces, we'll go ahead and do this. We've got that selected. Press Shift and E, which is the same as coming up to Edge and doing Edge Crease. Mouse to the right, and you can begin to see all of those snap to that boundary. And you just want to make sure Edge Crease is set to 1. And then when we turn off Optimal Display, we no longer see that influence line coming in. So it's nice and flat where we want it to be flat. So we double click, and we zoom out and we'll add the rest of this outer boundary area and we can see the influence when we press shift r to repeat that last command and it makes that nice and flat in exactly the areas where we want it to be flat and in fact we can also come down here and do this let's turn off subdivision we can see it we'd preferentially maybe like to do it here 
And this is how you can test this. If I want to, if I'm not sure where my planar regions are, I can select this face and we can come up to select and we can do select linked flat faces and that will tell me where my planar regions are. So this is the boundary that I want to prevent these long irregular polygons from having an influence in for this area, which I want to remain a flat boundary. So shift and E and we'll pull that, tell it's a value of one, turn subdivision back on, and we don't have all of these polygons moving into our planar region. It's awesome. So let's turn that back on and we can just look at this in a shaded view, tab key leaves edit mode, and there we have our tab.